Hello and welcome to GameSack. I love the TurboGrafx-16 and its CD add-on. You might also know it as the Turbo Duo. Of course, outside of North America, it's called the PC Engine. Anyway, there were 138 games officially released for the console here, and I want to review them all. That's right, every single one of them in a single episode, both HueCard and CD. I'll be playing them all freshly for this episode and on real hardware. I'll also be keeping the reviews to about 20 seconds or so in length. Anyway, let's begin. First up is The Addams Family on CD from ICOM Simulations. Here you play as Tully from the first movie, trying to get to the Addams Family vault while members of the said family mess with you. The control is decent, and naturally you shoot projectiles from your umbrella. Sadly, the stage design and gameplay balance is pretty heavy, and it's not tremendously fun. Arrow Blasters This Hue card is a pleasant and fun little shooter. This one is also on the Genesis, where it's known as Air Busters. I actually like the turbo version here more as I feel the gameplay is slightly smoother and the music is much better. This one's pretty easy to get into, but not quite as easy to complete. Air Zonk This is another horizontal shooter. This one has you playing as a caveman from the future. Yeah. The game is very chaotic with stuff going on everywhere and it's kind of distracting. You'll spend most of the game as Tiny Zonk, however you can get some weird power-ups. This is definitely a cool game, and they went all out on this one. Alien Crush This is the first video pinball game on the console. The artwork here is slathered with inspirations from H.R. Giger. It turns out that aliens just want to play pinball. You have your choice of fast or slow play, as well as two different music tracks. It plays well enough, though I wish it scrolled instead of flipped screens, though you do get used to it after a bit. Andre Panza Kickboxing. This one-on-one -on -one fighting game has a lot of options. It also has very fluid animation. Unfortunately, it controls like a very old computer game with lots of lag. In fact, it reminds me of Karateka or Karateka or however you pronounce it. This game showed up on other platforms under different names. Hard pass. One, two. Ballistics. This is a European robo-apocalyptic future sports game. It's seriously its own genre. Back in the late 80s, European gamers absolutely loved their apocalyptic future sports games featuring robots. But honestly, there's not a whole lot here. Try to get the dark ball into your opponent's goal while shooting it with your balls. I can't really recommend it. Battle Royale. This game was ever only released in the US. In this one, you and up to four other wrestlers, either computer or human players, try to throw all of the other wrestlers out of the ring to be the last man standing. That's it. Not much to do in single player mode, it's best when you have a bunch of friends over. It's not bad, I just wish there were more to it. Oh, yeah. Beyond Shadowgate. This Super CD is the direct sequel to Shadowgate, and I love this game for the most part. You control Prince Eric, who you see on screen at all times. It's still a point-and-click adventure, but they added combat, which doesn't control well. Still, it's really fun, and I love the graphics, even if they are a bit grainy. They look better on a CRT. Play this one if you can. Blazing Lasers. The game magazines all love this Hue card shooter when it came out back in the day. But it doesn't show off what the console can do, as it's extremely sparse and the stages are overly long. It's still fun, but there's almost nothing to look at and not much happens. At least the music is really good. Bloody Wolf. This is a cool overhead run and gun from Data East. It's quirky at first, but it's also very easy to love. You can shoot, climb, swim, and even jump. Unlimited continues help make it kind of easy, but it's a game you'll want to play over and over anyway. Be sure to check it out. Bomberman. This is the classic game where you lay bombs and try to get out of the way before they blow up. You can earn power-ups to lengthen your blast, place more bombs at once, move faster, or blow up the bombs at your command. Kill all of the enemies and then find the exit. It's a good game, but basic. Most people prefer the multiplayer mode. Bomberman 93. This is the same basic concept, but with a much better coat of paint and new worlds. This one also has some boss fights, which can be both fun and frustrating, but mostly fun. Neither Bomberman game is bad, but if you only get one, I recommend getting this one. 
Bonk's Bonk's Adventure. NEC finally had a mascot with the arrival of Bonk. He defeats enemies with his head. He eats meat which pisses him off and can even make him temporarily invincible. This is a pretty fun game that added a bit of personality to the system. Bonk's Revenge. This sequel is even better with more variety and improved graphics. I love the fish using snorkels. This is by far my favorite Bonk game on any platform. This is how sequels should be. If you only have one Bonk game in your library, make sure it's this one. Bonk 3, Bonk's Big Adventure. The third Bonk game is still good, but it's just not as good as the previous entry in my opinion. This one allows you to grab candy to make you grow big and powerful, or to shrink way down to become really tiny. You can even play with two players. This is also the only 8 megabit hue card on the system. Bonk 3 CD is basically just Bonk 3 on CD. You now have arranged music, but the game itself is mostly identical. There is less animation, however, especially when you're big bonk due to the limitations of the RAM on the Turbo Duo. There's also a two-player versus mode exclusive to the CD version. Boxy Boy. In this puzzle game, you need to shove the boxes onto the dots. You need to think the best way to go about this in each stage. This game is known as Shove It on the Genesis and Boxel on the Game Boy. I prefer this version because of its nicer presentation, but I'm still not a fan. Bravo Man! This is such a stupid game. You attack with your limbs which extend from your body quite a bit. The gameplay is only okay, but I do enjoy how goofy it all is. I also enjoy the scrolling which is really impressive given the hardware. The voices can be a little annoying at times. Buster Brothers. For some reason, bubbles are bouncing around and you have to shoot them in this CD game. Each hit makes them smaller and you need to keep shooting them until they're gone. Don't touch them or you'll die. You get power-ups that can make your life a little easier. Overall, not bad. Like any console, the TurboGrafx-16 has more mediocre and bad games than amazing games. But what's kind of weird is that I actually enjoy some of these mediocre games. I don't know what it is, there's just something about this console. Anyway, let's get back to the games. Kadash. This is a very colorful port of the arcade game. Be prepared to do a lot of grinding in this one. I remember this one being super easy back when I rented it, but I'm clearly misremembering. The audio sounds very thin in this one, and I do like it, but I just wish it had a save feature. Camp California. In this CD game, you play as a bear trying to defeat an evil capitalist company who pollutes. It's from ICOM Simulation, so the stage design leaves something to be desired. You often have no clue what you need to do. Still, this game does have some charm to it as well as the occasional Beach Boys tune. Champions Forever Boxing. In this one you can play as or against a few different boxing legends from the past. Sadly, it's a rather awkward game to play. Nintendo is the only company who ever figured out how to make a boxing game fun. And this ain't Nintendo. <laughs> Chase HQ. Race along various roadways until you find an evil criminal. Once you do, bash his car until he's forced to pull over and be arrested for his heinous crime. Oh, and you need to do all of this before the time runs out. The graphics are very jerky here, especially when you're in a turn. This is a low effort port of the arcade. Chew Man Fu. No, you're not on a quest to grow a Fu Manchu, but instead you need to roll colored balls to the same colored tiles. Watch out for the enemies. This one is moderately fun at first, but I tend to get bored rather quickly of these types of games. China Warrior. This was one of the first games released on the console in Japan. As such, it's meant to be a graphical showcase and not meant to play well. And play well, it most certainly doesn't. After you adapt to the control scheme, it gets a little better, but it never gets good. Cosmic Fantasy 2. This is a very basic RPG on CD from Telenet who tended to make very basic games most of the time. The battles don't even have their own screen, they just happen right there on the overworld map. It definitely gets better as more colorful characters join, but it starts out rather slow. 
Cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams. This is a CD shooter where you play as a little witch. There's some neat weapon power-ups and some really nice music. I used to be a big fan of this one, but over the years I've kind of lost interest in it. This is a port of the arcade game, which was the first game in the series. Crater Maze. You play as a dude who likes to collect treasure and dig holes. If an enemy gets too close, you can dig a hole for them to fall into. Then you bury them alive to defeat them! Yikes! You can get lots of fun power-ups. Collect all of the treasures to get the key to the stage exit. This one is actually kind of fun. Cybercore. This is a vertical shooter that often gets overlooked. It's actually not that bad, just a bit plain. It plays kind of like Dragon Spirit, which came first, and I'll get to that one in just a bit. You shoot enemies at your height and drop bombs to get ground-based enemies. This one has a good challenge. Darkwing Duck, oh Christ. This is probably the worst game on the platform. There's quite a bit of lag in the controls and the collision detection is iffy at best. I'll give them credit where it's due though, the game does have some nice graphics in spots. But playing this is a special form of torture. Davis Cup Tennis. Most tennis games except Virtua Tennis are bad. This might be the worst of the worst. The control is so bad that I was never even able to hit a ball as it approached me once. Who actually likes tennis anyway? Please don't answer, I don't care. Not Dead Moon. This is a fairly nice looking horizontal shooter. Power yourself up, but if you get hit, you'll power back down instead of losing a life. Get hit while powered down and you die. Since your ship is rather large, it's kind of easy to take lots of damage. Overall though, it's not bad. Deep Blue. This is a shooter that was programmed by a drunk guy over the course of three hours and never play tested. And this was good enough for NEC to actually release. The game is brutal and for some reason is severely letterboxed. There's really no fun to be had here. Devil's Crush. Here it is, the best video pinball game ever made or ever will be made. We get a scrolling play field here with satanic themes, which is pretty awesome unless you're a goody two-shoes. Are ya? Not only that, but the music is incredible. With the exception of the bonus stages, this looks and sounds better than Dragon's Fury on the Genesis. Double Dungeons. I'm not sure what the W stands for. Maybe where the hell do I go? This is it everyone, this is how the entire game looks. It doesn't even look half as good as Fantasy Star on the Master System. I like the music, but the game gets boring after maybe two or three minutes. Dragon Slayer, The Legend of Heroes. This is a traditional RPG from Falcom. It's a really good one despite the rather minimalistic look. The battle system is very fast and responsive and the story is well done. One of the best RPGs for the system. Absolutely timeless music as well. Dragon Spirit. This is a shooter that works kind of like Cybercore with the two levels of enemies and the two types of firepower you can use. You also get some really good music in this one. Your character is a bit too large though and you won't be powered up for long. It's good, it's just not my favorite. Dragon's Curse. This is a remake of Wonder Boy 3 from the Sega Master System. Here you get better color, smoother scrolling, and stereo sound. Use the abilities of different animals to navigate the land. It's a fantastic game that I recommend to everyone. This wouldn't be the last time this game would be remade from scratch. Drop Off. This is a weird version of Breakout from Data East. Don't like Breakout? Well then you probably won't like this. Love Breakout? You still won't like this. I can't quite figure out why this game exists. Dungeon Explorer. This is basically Gauntlet for the TurboGrafx-16 with some RPG elements thrown in for fun. And it's definitely fun. There's lots of dungeons to find and fight your way through with great music. Up to five players can play simultaneously if you have a turbo tab. Dungeon Explorer 2. This sequel arrived a couple of years later as a CD game. It's mostly more of the same and that's a good thing. Well, it does move a bit slower. The music is fantastic and it was arranged by the same people who did Cotton on the system. This is one of the more rare games on CD. 
Dungeon Master Theron's Quest. This CD game is a dungeon crawler that controls like those super clunky might and magic games. In other words, this is not at home on a console. I like the music though, I just can't get into the way it controls at all. This belongs on 80s computers, yet it's a console exclusive. Go figure. Dungeons & Dragons Order of the Griffin is another console exclusive that does not belong on a console. It does handle a bit better than Dungeon Master when it comes to moving around. The battles kind of play out like a crappy strategy game. The music is good, but it always cuts out. This could be much better. Dynastic Hero This CD game is a remake of Wonder Boy in Monster World on the Genesis, and it's pretty obscure. It loses all of the parallax scrolling, but gains some okayish CD music and much worse character design. Regardless, this is still a great game with lots of substance. Exile. This CD is kind of an action RPG hybrid. Far more emphasis is put on the action, however, which is of average quality. In the towns, you have a bunch of people who follow you around, but you can never play as them in the action scenes. Overall, it's better and more complete than the Genesis version. Exile Wicked Phenomenon. This CD sequel is better than the first game, in my opinion. Unfortunately, you walk almost at the edge of the screen, but now you can play as any of the four characters in the action scenes at any time. This one is a lot tougher, and unlike the first game, it'll take you more than just a few hours to complete. Falcon. This is a flight simulator that should not be on a console. You fly an unresponsive plane while looking at indecipherable objects. I feel sorry for my turbo graphics. Fantasy Zone. I swear, every console has a version of this. The one on the TurboGrafx-16 isn't bad. You have a map of the bases you need to destroy at the bottom of the screen. Oh, and thank God for the built-in rapid-fire switches on the turbo controller. They do make it kind of easy, though. Fighting Street. This CD is a home port of the very first Street Fighter game. Not sure why they renamed it. It's absolutely awful and completely silly. Still, it's a damn faithful port of the arcade, voices and all. And for the longest time, this was the best way you could officially play it at home. All right. Final Lap Twin. This is a port of the Namco arcade game and it forces you into a split screen view. A quest mode has been added to provide some depth to the game. It's like a basic RPG, but the battles are all races instead of fights. Neat idea, but it still forces the split screen. Final Zone 2. This is an overhead run and gun game on CD. It's extremely average when it comes to gameplay, but certainly not awful. The goofy cutscenes and some of the music are what make it stand out, though. Don't expect much, and you shouldn't be let down. Forgotten Worlds. This CD port of the arcade game includes the stages that the Genesis version left out. Though in my opinion, those omissions were not a big deal. Still, I always thought that this goofy game was pretty cool, and the port here is a solid one. Galaga 90. This is a great update to the original Galaga with nice visuals and pleasant sound. It also includes these weird scrolling stages, which I'm not sure if I'm really on board with or not. They don't hurt the game, and I guess they're a decent change of pace. Check this one out. Gate of Thunder. Hudson Soft really pulled out all the stops when the Turbo Duo came out and created this shooter CD as a showcase for it. It's a fantastic game with nice stages, an amazing soundtrack, and excellent graphics. Bonk 1, 2, and Bomberman are also on this disc. Outstanding. Ghost Manor. Another game from ICOM Simulations. They sure loved the Turbo Graphics. Unfortunately, they were not in love with good stage design. I can't even remember what I'm supposed to do in this dumb game. I'm not sure why they were allowed to keep making games for the system. Godzilla. This CD is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where you fight other monsters. It's not great as one of the two buttons is dedicated to jumping. Still, it's way better than any of the other fighting games that came out in the US. The graphics are especially nice. Gunboat. This is another game on the console that tries to use polygons. You play during the Vietnam War trying to destroy Charlie and stuff like that. 
This is way better than Falcon, but it still sucks. I think with a few refinements to the control, it could be a lot better. Hit the Ice. This is one of two hockey games on the Turbo. This one is a port of an arcade game. I like the big characters, but honestly, it doesn't play all that well. Also, there's no music and only the occasional grunt when it comes to audio, so it sounds pretty empty. Impossible. I don't know why the people at NEC commissioned games like this instead of importing better ones that already existed in Japan. You play as a European mole who needs to collect scrolls. Par for the course, and the stage design and gameplay are both quite bad. It came from the desert. This CD is a very strange game that uses full motion video. It's all very bizarre and I guess that's its charm. You rarely need to do anything except make choices on where to go. Sometimes there's a bit of gameplay, but not often. This one is confusing for sure. I thought we were going someplace together, Buzz. Maybe California? All right, we're almost but not quite halfway through all of these games. It's going pretty quickly, don't you think? I think it is. It's definitely faster than it took to record all of these games. JB Herald Murder Club. I love this one. It's basically a graphical text adventure on CD, and I've played through it several times. Try to find Bill Robbins' murderer and get him or her to confess. You can even engage Japanese or English speech for all of the dialogue. I took the day off work and went shopping. JJ and Jeff. This platformer was originally based on two Japanese comedians, but changed to generic nobodies for the US release. The gameplay is a bit weird, and it takes some getting used to. It's not one that I often come back to. Jack Nicholas's Turbo Golf. This is perhaps the worst golf game ever made. The visuals are horrible and the swing meter is extremely difficult to control. It's also very slow. There is only one course to play on this stupid card. Jack Nicholas's Turbo Golf. Yes, there's even a CD version of this game which lets you choose from five different courses thanks to the limitless storage capacity of the CD medium. Simply unbelievable. This game still sucks though. There are some tunes to listen to and I even made it to the green before I shut it off in disgust. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. This is an excellent action platformer that's a nice upgrade over the NES original. I didn't know who Jackie Chan was when this one originally came out and I quickly learned. Excellent graphics and music only add to the fun. John Madden Duo CD Football. Madden Football finally came to the Turbo Graphics on CD. It's actually a decent playing game, though the passing windows are mysteriously absent from this version. Lots of full motion video clips in here as well. This is the best football game on the system. Keith Courage in Alpha Zones. This came packed in with the system at launch. I love the way that this game sounds. You have an overworld and an underworld to contend with. Unfortunately, once you beat the first boss, you've pretty much seen most of what the game has to offer. King of Casino. I don't like casinos in real life because I'm not a smoker who's a thousand years old and I don't like video game versions either. This one even seems less interesting than casino games on the Master System. No thank you. It is the 90s, and there is time for Clax. Thank God it's not the 90s anymore, and there's no more time for this nonsense. This is a boring color matching puzzle game that desperately needs some music, but I guess the thought never occurred to them. Last Alert. This is a really cool run and gun on CD. The action is simple and good. You can even level up and gain better weaponry as you kill more and more bad guys. Plus, it has some of the most so bad it's good voice acting in any game ever made. Definitely give it a try. The Legend of Hero Tanma. This is a goofy action platformer from IREM. You can power yourself up so much that you live in perpetual slowdown, but it's fun. Watch out though as a single hit and you die. This is a pricey title, but don't regret it now. You must regret it later. The Legendary Axe. I love this game and pull it down to play for fun quite often. Your axe has a charge meter where the more full it is, the more powerful your attack is. The game is rather slow, but I love it to death anyway. There's just something about it. 
The Legendary Axe 2. This has literally nothing to do with the first game, at least as far as gameplay or story goes. Still, it's incredibly fun and addictive. It's a much faster game, and this time the music is much better as well. This is another one that I pull down to play often. Loom. This is a point-and-click adventure on CD from LucasArts. You're a dude in a robe, and you go and visit the elder dudes in robes. Suddenly, they're attacked by a bunch of stupid geese. I hate geese. I usually like point-and-click adventures, but this one seems extra slow and boring to me. Lords of the Rising Sun. This one is a strategy war game. It's fairly complex at first, and, well, it's not easy. But it does have a lot of minigames to help keep things fresh. It's actually better than you might think it is. Lords of Thunder. This CD is a blast to play. This is what console gaming is all about. This is an amazing horizontal shooter with graphics you didn't think were possible on the system. It also has some amazing music. Perhaps a bit easy, but this is a must own for sure. Magical Chase. Here it is everyone, the most expensive game on the platform. It can fetch well over five grand complete, but it's an excellent shooter that kind of reminds me a little of Cotton, except that this is a much better game in every regard. Check the couch for some spare change and grab yourself a copy today. The Magical Dinosaur Tour. This CD isn't so much a game as it is an edutainment title. Some of the visuals are pretty nice. This is the TurboGrafx CD trying to be the CDI before the CDI existed. Celophysis was a slim, nimble carnivore. Might and Magic 3 Isles of Terra. Oh god, no, not another computer game on the TurboGrafx. Actually, this CD is a lot better than I thought it would be. It seems they put at least some effort into adapting it to exist on a console. Don't get me wrong, I'd still rather play something else. Military Madness. This is a cool little strategy game. Shift your troops and vehicles around and attack the enemy. Then the enemy takes a turn. It's certainly no shining force, but it's somewhat enjoyable. Monster Lair. Along with Fighting Street, this was one of the first two CD games available here in the US. This game is actually part of the Wonder Boy series. You're on foot for the first part of the stage and then you fight the boss while playing as a horizontal shooter. This is the best version of this game, even beating the arcade. Moto Rotor. This is the worst racing game ever made. Up to five players can play, but even in single player mode, it forces five cars on screen at all times. That means you or your opponents are constantly bouncing back onto the screen. Plus, the control is just awful. This game has no right to exist. Newtopia. This is a ripoff of the first Legend of Zelda game, and it's pretty good. It doesn't offer much that Zelda doesn't, except for more colorful graphics and sound quality that is a touch more pleasing, though the music itself isn't as good. It's still a great adventure, though. Newtopia 2. This is the improved sequel. You can now move diagonally, which is cool, and you can even attack diagonally. This right here improves the gameplay quite a bit. The graphics and music are also a bit better than the previous game. This is a great follow-up. New Adventure Island. This one sticks to the roots that originated in the first Wonder Boy game. It's pretty fun, though it's not even in the same league as Super Adventure Island on the Super Nintendo, which came out earlier. And yes, it's still new, otherwise they couldn't call it New Adventure Island. Night Creatures. Another Western developed game for the system. Of course, that means the gameplay is pretty wonky and not tight at all. I do give props to some of the scrolling though. It's weirdly not as bad as it looks, but I still don't recommend it much. Ninja Spirit. Sorry, I couldn't resist. This is an excellent ninja game from Iram based on the arcade. I love the floaty jumps and some of the crazy power-ups that you can get. This was eventually packed in with the Turbo Duo among many, many, many other games for very good reason. This is an excellent game. Ordine. This is a weird little shooter from Namco. 
A lot of the graphical effects had to be severely cut back from the arcade, but all of the gameplay remains intact. That includes the shop where you can power up your ship. This is a fun game with a nice soundtrack that helps it out. Pac-Land. This is a curious take on Pac-Man that has you running through his world to the right to get through various obstacles. Once you arrive, you deliver a fairy that was under your hat. Then you gotta make your way all the way back to your house. It sounds dumb, but I actually like it quite a bit. Try it out. Parasol Stars. This is one of those single screen games that Taito loves to make. It's the third game in the Bubble Bobble series. Kill all of the enemies with the umbrella and then move on to the next screen. It's fun for maybe two or three minutes. Power Golf. This is a good looking and sounding overhead golf game, but it is not good playing. The meter moves way too fast and the rest of the game moves way too slow. There are no good golf games on this console, at least not in the US. Prince of Persia. I've never been a fan of this one as I felt other games that were inspired by it like Blackthorn were infinitely better. Still, the presentation on this CD is good, if you're into these sorts of ultra laggy games. Psychosis. This horizontal shooter from Nagzat tries to be strange. It's not a bad playing game, but the only thing this title has going for it are the slightly weird visuals. I never find myself having a desire to play this one. All right, we're on the final stretch. One last really big group of games. Come on, we can do this. I believe in you. R-Type. I love this shooter, and in my opinion, the first one is still the best one. None of the subsequent games could capture the same magic. This is my favorite version of the game, mainly due to the sound quality. This is another must-own for the console. Raiden. This is a 6 megabit hue card which was a big deal at the time. It's a faithful port of the arcade and overall it plays well. I do feel that they could have tried a bit harder with the music but otherwise it's pretty solid. Riot Zone. This CD brawler is the console's version of Final Fight or Streets of Rage. It's actually a port of a Sega arcade game. It plays well but it's nowhere near as good as the two aforementioned titles. As long as you're okay with that, you'll have a good time with this one. Samurai Ghost. This is a strange sequel to a Namco arcade game. I like the scrolling, but the gameplay and sound leave a lot to be desired. Your character moves like Ernest Evans on the Genesis and that is not a compliment. The voices sound like vomit. I'm wondering why they even bothered to include them. Shadow of the Beast. This is such a strange and incohesive game and I love it. In fact, this CD is the only version of the game that I like even a little bit. The outstanding music probably helps a lot, but the gameplay is more solid than the other versions I've played. Give this one a go. Shapeshifter. This CD is from ICOM Simulation, so of course there's questionable gameplay, stage design, and controls. Not to mention enemies that love to hover on you. Ah, get off! But man, did they do an amazing job at the parallax scrolling effects. Overall, a decent game that could use improved controls. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. This was the first game with full motion video that I ever saw. I enjoyed the CD a lot back when it was new. You interview people and then you go to court to try to prove who committed the murder. To me, this guy will always be Sherlock Holmes. Most of you probably won't like it though. Well then I surmise it's Weatherby you know nothing about. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Volume 2. Three more mysteries to solve on this CD. Most of the same actors return, though Holmes is sporting a wicked new hairdo. I think they perhaps overlit the production this time. I mean, just look at Watson's blown out head. Not much left to analyze. Shockman. I always thought this game kind of looked like Mega Man. Despite being able to duck and shoot up, it doesn't quite play as well as that one. This game does offer some variety though, like shooter levels. Overall, not bad and should help quench some run and gun needs. Sidearms. 
This horizontal shooter is actually the predecessor to Forgotten Worlds. You shoot left with the 2 button and right with the 1 button. It plays well, but even when it was new, this one kind of felt old. At least there's some nice music here, but you might get bored with it rather quick. Silent Debuggers In this one, you're on a space station, and you need to clear it of monsters that are lurking around. It controls okay, and if you like dungeon crawlers, you may like it. I do wish there were a few more frames of animation when you're moving around, but overall it works well. This one isn't for everyone. Sim Earth On this CD, you can develop an entire planet, and oh boy, there are a ton of options to mess around with. The only bad thing is that it's rather slow since the game is a little too complex for the platform. Still fun to put power plants next to dinosaurs, or have tidal waves ravage the shore. Sinistron. This is a slightly above average horizontal shooter. You can open your thingy up for a wide dispersal of your weapons or close it for a powerful and concentrated narrow shot. This stage certainly feels like it could use some parallax scrolling. I like it more than Psychosis, I guess. Soldier Blade. This is probably my favorite game in the excellent Star Soldier series. It has some great action and even better music. The only thing that's somewhat bad is you probably can't play this one for very long if you're prone to photosensitive seizures. Otherwise, it's a fantastic game. Summer Assault. This is a bizarre concept for a game if there ever was one. You play as a slinky with attack powers who takes on the signs of astrology? Yeah, it plays as weird as it looks, but I do applaud them for taking a chance on a new concept. Sonic Spike. This is one of the two volleyball games for the system. Like all volleyball games, I have an extremely difficult time controlling it. The graphics look good, but they don't move very well. The sound is also extremely weak. No thanks. Space Harrier. This version plays fine for the most part, but it looks and sounds awful. Everything is so teensy tiny and the voices are incredibly garbled. As a Space Harrier fan, I always felt that this port was kind of sad, really. Splash Lake. I picked this one up on clearance not even knowing what it was. It's one of those puzzle games which is fun for maybe two or three minutes at the most. Your goal is to sink everyone else. It seems to keep changing the rules as you go. Not sure why this one needs to be on CD. Splatterhouse. This is the first game in the series, and the first game has always been my favorite. This is a pretty good port from the arcade game, and I love the sound quality of this particular version. It was also the first console game in the US to include a warning on the box for timid parents. Super Air Zonk. This is another CD I got on clearance. This sequel plays a bit slower than the original and loses all of the parallax scrolling. It's still a good game with some well done artwork though. I also really like the music. In each stage you can get a unique power up by rescuing a little guy. Overall, not bad. Super Star Soldier. This is another really cool game in the Star Soldier series. It's quite a bit more challenging than Soldier Blade. In fact, sometimes it ventures somewhat into bullet held territory and your hitbox is way bigger than a single pixel. Still, there's lots of fun to be had here. Super Volleyball. Because when your console only has 138 games to offer, two of them need to be volleyball. That's how much demand there is for this sport. It's a bit easier to play than Sonic Spike, but not much. It looks a lot more bland though. This game is also on the Genesis. Sid Mead's Terraforming. In this horizontal shooter, you play as conceptual artist Sid Mead trying to terraform stuff. And by terraforming stuff, I mean blowing it away. The box has the Super CD logo on it, but it'll play just fine with the older system cards. I assume that Sid Mead did all of the graphics, music, and programming. The music is awesome, but his enemy layout makes the game a touch boring sometimes. Taking it to the hoop. This is a moderately decent game of basketball. The graphics look good with almost but not quite chibi style characters. I don't care for how a couple of the players are always flickering though. The double dribble style close-ups are really cool, but the meters are tough to master. Tailspin. 
Did I say that Darkwing Duck was the worst game on the Turbo Graphics? I meant that this one is. I'm sure that the exact same people are behind it though, you can just tell. This is what happens when you let people who don't play video games make video games. It never ever works out in a good way. Tiger Road. I've always kind of liked this game. It reminds me a bit of Kung Fu Kid on the Sega Master System. The action here is good, except for these stages where you float for whatever reason. Oh, and you want to try to keep the axe as it's the best weapon. Time Ball. You have a ball on a track that disappears as it rolls along. You have to shift the tiles to make sure that the ball goes over all of the track. It reminds me of Junction on the Genesis, but much more basic. I like the music here, but that's really about it. Time Cruise. This is the third video pinball game on the system. And guess what? There are no bad pinball games on this console. This one is a little more reserved than the others, but there's still no way it could actually exist as a real pinball table, which makes it more interesting to me. Tricky Kick. This is a puzzle game where you need to kick an animal into the same kind of animal to get it to disappear. This one is fun until you get past the title screen. Otherwise, honestly, I just kind of despise these kinds of games. You might like it though, no hate. Turrican. I've never cared much for the original Turrican and this one doesn't do anything to win me over. The sequels are all at least 10 to 20 times better, if not even more so. This one feels pretty stiff and janky and you lose health even if you look at the screen wrong. The poor Turbo Graphics. TV Sports Basketball. This is a very poor basketball game by Cinemaware, who only made poor games when it came to sports. The court is viewed vertically and then it goes horizontal when you switch sides, which is odd. It also makes it difficult to know which side of the court you're on. There's hardly any sound, making it feel very empty. TV Sports Football. Here's Cinemaware's football game. The graphics look decent and some of the voices are good. Sadly, that's all you get in this package. The gameplay is a complete afterthought and you should not play this. TV Sports Hockey. This one actually isn't half bad. It's better than Hit the Ice. Surprisingly, Cinemaware's name isn't on this one. Must be the reason for the increase in quality. The scrolling is a bit jerky, but otherwise I give a C plus for the effort. Valis 2. This CD is a very plain action platformer, even for its time. I remember this back when it was brand new and wondering, why is it so plain? It still plays pretty well though. The music isn't bad, but the voices are all acted very poorly. <laughs> like I should talk. Magus is the rightful heir and successor to the throne of Vacanti. Valis 3. This CD restores the levels that were omitted in the Genesis version, but of course gets rid of any of the parallax scrolling in the process. The graphics are much better than the second game. I like how you can switch characters at any time after you obtain them, and your attacks now work in a similar way to the legendary axe. The Genesis version does play better though. Vastille. This is a spacefaring strategy game set to lounge music. Take turns moving your pieces around. During the battles, you take control of your piece directly to attack or defend, which is kind of unique. Aside from the elevator music, I like it quite a bit. V.A.U.S. Tactical Gladiator? This is such a strange game and that's mainly due to the controls. They are the opposite of intuitive. Still, it can be fun once you learn them, but I don't feel like putting in the time to relearn them every time I play the game. A great concept, but poor execution. Victory Run. I could never get into this one very much as it always felt kind of sloppy and a bit unfinished. It's very jerky and it just doesn't feel right when you're turning. It wants to be outrun, but don't let it fool you. It's mediocre at best. Hey, at least the music is good though. Vigilante. This is a really nice looking port of the arcade game. It plays well except for these two guys who keep walking away from you, not letting you get hits in. The sound is kind of twangy. I think I enjoy playing the Master System version a bit more because it doesn't have both of these guys in it. World Class Baseball. This is the only baseball game on the console and it's okay. 
It kind of reminds me of Tommy Lasorda Baseball in the Genesis, but it's not quite that good. They left the Japanese voices in the US release, so they didn't even try with the localization. <laughs> World Court Tennis On one hand, you have an incredibly bare-bones tennis game. On the other, you have the quest mode where you need to defeat the evil tennis king. The random battles are insanely long and tough tennis matches. Nice try, but no thank you. World Sports Competition This is Hudson Soft's version of track and field or decathlete. Try as they might, Hudson is no Konami or Sega. Well, I guess they are actually part of Konami now. You wouldn't know it by playing this game, though. It's insanely tough and not very interesting. Yo, bro! This is the Hue Card companion piece to Camp California, complete with Beach Boys music. Skate around rescuing people and defeating bad things that are scattered about. It's actually a really fun concept, but since it's from ICOM Simulations, of course they've got to screw it up. The control is quite bad here, and it would be super fun if it weren't an issue. East Book 1 and 2. This is an amazing action RPG. Some people might not like the bump fighting mechanics, but screw them. This game is awesome. Amazing voice talent, music, and an interesting and fun quest. Actually, two quests to get through. This is the best version of these two games and has always been a showpiece for the system. Finally, we have East 3 Wanderers from East. This one takes place with a side view and you actually have to swing your sword this time. It's only about three or four hours long, it's jerky as hell, and it's weird. But I still love it, and the music is, again, outstanding. It's quite expensive these days, too. Well, there you go. Every single game for the Turbo Graphics 16 and Turbo Duo. If it's not in this video, it was not officially released here. And boy, oh boy, could they have done a much better job bringing over all the great software from Japan. If they had done that, I think it would have been a much more popular system. Anyway, what do you think of the Turbo Graphics 16 library? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameZack. charge your life with the Turbo Graphics 16, the higher energy video game system from NEC. Here's what Nintendo looks like. Now here's what Turbo Graphics looks like. What a difference! Once more, here's Nintendo. And here's the Turbo Graphics 16. Whoa! Are you ready to get turbo charged? Get your ass down to the store and get a Turbo Graphics, idiot!